Oh shit, here we go again, Rockstar. I guess we won't be getting a classic December update this year. And while well, yes, it's disappointing, I decided I won't let it get me down this time. So I got to work on visualizing the seemingly most wanted farming. You want to flee your life to become a poor, struggling farmer with a passion for gunslinging on the side? Well, so do I. Honestly, until I did some quick research on the historical circumstances in the 1890s, I wasn't even aware of just how much of it could be woven into a story expansion for Red Dead Online. Around this time, towards the end of the century, workers in agriculture were heavily struggling under the revolutionary changes in production, travel, trade, and as we all know, law. Making a living off of traditional farming became increasingly more difficult due to falling prices that came as a direct result of the use of new machinery, both in harvesting itself, but also through new transportation methods such as the railroads. We've already seen the construction of a new railroad in the story mode, and I think this could be a reason to finally introduce the big bad boy, <laughs> Mr. Cornwall, into the story mode somehow. But these weren't the only problems farmers faced. There was taxation, debt, and exploitation that led to social and political movements. And, you know, somewhere in this debacle, there could be your character, coming across a shootout at a ranch between the owners and people from the government failing to coerce the ranchers to sell their farm. You rush to defend the ranchers, but despite your efforts, aside from you, no one makes it out alive. And instead of leaving the animals to their fate of either starving or being taken by thieves, you decide to stay and make it your new work and home. Or if you do not like that one, there's option B. Cribs hears about an empty farm and advises you to make the investment. It would be a farm that's been cleared of its previous owners who refused to sell, and they also got into a gunfight. You might have to work for the government and be dealing with the actual hardships of the new age of farming. But because you're not an innocent person shying away from bloodshed, you're starting to work against the regulations and joining protests that, well, likely will end in chaos, because you know, this is still Red Dead Redemption. And there's also a third option that would be a little bit simpler. You enter a contract with Bonnie, who asks for your help around the farm. And after you do a few missions and level up to, let's say, level 5, she tells you about an empty farm that needs to find a new owner. These last two scenarios would be perfect for making you choose your own farm location. My favorite picks would be the Ridgewood Farm down in New Austin, if you're looking for a warmer location to spend your days, Pronghorn Ranch up in West Elizabeth by the gorgeous lavender fields, or how about the Downs Ranch, which is also vacant and online. All of them are big enough to keep multiple types of animals and buildings, and also have enough space surrounding it to expand. I think this could be a role update that would really work out. But in the case of no story content where it's just you and your ranch, there's a couple more things I came up with. Let's start with the activities and how your current business partners could be incorporated into this new role. My man Cribs could use his connections to score you new trading partnerships. These could be the Valentine auctioneers from whom you can buy sheep but also herd or sell for them. And for more criminal action, you could also steal a flock of sheep and sell it to them, similar to how it went down in the story mode. Another partner could be the owner of the Emerald Ranch. With the mystery surrounding his daughter, he'd be very interesting, I think, and to make it a bit more fun, <laughs> he could be making comments about raiders who keep sedating his livestock and getting away with it constantly. Trade of your farmer's goods should still go through Crips, who should be getting his own space on the farm in my opinion, by the way. If you have goods for your trader and farmer's role, it should be possible to deliver them at the same time. This could have a randomized factor of selling all to one person or making it two separate stops during the same delivery. If you wish to only sell to one person, that should also be possible. Options and personalization of your playstyle should always be considered. Moving on to number two, who would be Bonnie McFarlane. She already helped John with acquiring livestock back in 2010, so why wouldn't she help us now? We already have a connection to her, this is a no-brainer and I'd love to spend more time with her, apart from watching her polish her gun to perfection. She could be your partner when it comes to animals such as pigs, chickens, or I don't know, let's say horses, and just for fun times. I think she's always been a good sport. Next on the list would be our darling Harriet, who, yes, needs to be involved too. 
I think we're all united in our feelings towards her. She's annoying, yeah, sure, but if they gave her more purpose, I think she could have potential. I, for one, would let her have an attempt at a redemption arc. So here's my idea. Owning a farm and tending to the animals also requires an awareness for their well-being. Currently, there is no one better to ask than Harriet. She's not just familiar with animals, but also with herbs and their uses. She could work on medicine, maybe even food for your animals. This could result in a boost in more milk or bigger eggs for your own benefits. But it could also introduce a new random encounter similar to the ones where you relieve a dying animal of its pain, except this time you actually help by tending to an injury, likely lost sheep or other harmless animals for a change. It's small things like this that would perfectly tie the worlds together and make it feel like you're living one life, learning from everyone you know and using that knowledge, instead of living five entirely separate lives. Farming could also, and finally, make use of the Davies brothers. They were falsely advertised to us in the opening of online, and three years after launch, they're still gone. They're not here. So what better time for them to make an entrance than in the farming role? You've got a ranch, they trade with horses. It's a perfect match. And what else would be perfect is if you couldn't just sell tamed horses, but also breed your own and then sell those too. Okay, but what else do we need aside from connections? A new role needs new features. Ideally, you'd start out small. After you become the proud owner of your ranch, you'll have to get to work, of course. Either you'd start out with bare land or a small lot that you can expand upon. Animals would include chickens, sheep, pigs, goats, cows and bulls, horses, dogs, and more. Each new type requiring you to build an area for them. It would be awesome if this wasn't a requirement to level up though, so you could keep whatever kind of a ranch you wanted. Specialize it or don't, it should be up to you. With all this you'll need help though, so head on down to the post office and check the bulletin board for helping hands you could hire. And also ask your posse to help you out. Let's say you choose to start out small with chickens. You will need to build a chicken coop, feed them, collect their eggs, and sell them for cribs or keep them for consumption. As you level up, you unlock another space for an animal. Perhaps you invest in sheep. Before you do that, though, you should build a fence and shelter for them. After you've bought them, you'll herd them back to their new home. And if you own one, you could train your dog to help with it and reduce the risk of them falling prey to wolves or running off of cliffs or whatever else they might do. As you level up, new and bigger wagons should become available to you to transport your goods with new colors and designs to choose from. And more importantly, be given the ability to assign workhorses to all your wagons. That breed currently seems useless to me and I would love to see them used as they're intended to be. Now, not to forget of course are the leveling rewards. Aside from farm improvements such as workers, better equipment, deals with customers, I would be dying for the donkey to become purchasable. Not just as a working animal, but just, you know, in general, to ride on into the sunset. To me, more dog breeds are also a big deal. Perhaps a German Shepherd, a Border Collie, or other breeds commonly used for herding. And with that, I would love to be able to teach them commands too. In the Moonshiner role, you get to sort of personalize your moonshine check, right? Which would also be awesome to see for the farm. Your main house, aka your home, should definitely be customizable. Where I could see the farmer's rule lacking a bit though is clothing, as we already have a wide variety of what would commonly be worn by workers. But I think there would be room for some more overalls or work dresses for female characters. And maybe even go ham and give us something like fun overalls with short shorts or a western typical stick of weed to munch on. Just let us explore our inner old man Jenkins, who also leads us to our next reward, which are weapons. They'd mostly be close combat ones I guess, like small size pickaxes or a short pitchfork. Now daily activities. Those could include feeding, milking cows, collecting eggs, maybe even churn butter, clean the stables, grow and harvest crops and vegetables, which could also be used in new camp recipes by the way. You could chop some wood, maybe birth a horse, you know it's easy to keep busy on a farm. Last but not least, we need to think about free roam events as well. Every role so far has had them and I think this one wouldn't need to be an exception. I'm thinking of more silly things here like catching chickens, speed milking, breaking the most wild horses or harvesting the most crops. You could be placed in a corn maze raising to get out the fastest while collecting items hidden in it. You know, just some fun and competitive stuff that for once does not lean on shooting each other. 
I really believe all these things aren't too far-fetched or impossible to implement in the game. And as I said in my last video, half the animations are already in the game. And considering that, I understand that currently the community is plagued with negativity towards the game and Rockstar, and for good reason. However, I'm starting to get sick of it and just kind of wanted to get my, my brainstorm on and get together some of the thoughts that I've had. You know, in the hopes that maybe one day some of it at least would make it into the game. If you have your own ideas, I would love to hear about them in the comments. And I would also be interested in knowing which one of the introductions to the role you prefer, or if you have an entirely different idea. 